All right, welcome back. So uh, that is where we are starting from this morning. The decision of the court in Uyo, Akwabumse capital, where the election of uh, the governorship candidate of APC in Akwabumse was nullified. The court did agree with Senator Itainan saying that um, the candidate was not qualified and not a member of the political party. So we'll be taking a look at some of those decisions and the legal position or perspective and implications of that, if you will. We've got uh, two gentlemen who will talk about that. But first, we have uh, Mr. Ajibulu. Actually, Tunda Ajibulu was the chairman of that Akwaibom APC primaries committee. So he presided over that uh, conduct of how uh, Akandofia emerged. So he joins us to shed light on what transpired. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, yes, you uh, definitely have heard about that uh, judgment. So could you don't take us back to what transpired, uh, what your impression is of that judgment of the court? Uh, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Yes, um, go ahead. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Nigeria. Um, always a pleasure to be on channels. Well, I must say, it wasn't like I was following the case, but um, when the judgment um, when the judgment came out yesterday, I mean, my phone started ringing, you know, because um, a lot of people remembered that um, I chaired um, the process. So speaking about the judgment, I must say, I must say that I'm... Um, Stunned. I'm shocked. Um, I, 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 I just don't get it. Uh, because um, I was the chairman of the Aqua Ibom APC 2022 gubernatorial uh, primaries. Primaries were conducted. And then the gentleman that um, was supposed to be here, Senator Thailand, also participated um, in the process, you know. And I must say, this um, primary has been fraught with, I don't know, there's just been so much interest in it, and I really don't understand. You know, it first started with the resident electoral commissioner that, um, you know, went on and on and on and on on TV. I mean, saying all sorts of things. I mean, this is the same um, resident electoral commissioner that called me and tried to convince me to come and conduct primaries in another venue. And he called me on the phone of the DSS director, you know? So it's on record. And I said to him, I said, I'm not sure when INEC started to decide venues to conduct primaries, that I have a mandate from my party, the All Progressive Congress, to come to Akwaibom and conduct primaries at the National Secretariat. And that is what um, I'm gonna do. Anyway, that um, aside, um, I've not seen the court judgment, but I've um, seen it on social media. I've seen it on um, I've seen it on your on your TV. I've seen it on Arise. I've seen it on different platforms. So there's no smoke without fire, and the judgment is bizarre, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm not sure. Like the same way I told the resident electoral commissioner that I don't understand when INEC will be deciding where a party will conduct primaries. I don't understand how a judge can determine <laughs> whether somebody is a member of a political party or not. When the political party in question says this person, this individual is a member of our party. This individual was screened, <laughs> you know, this individual was granted a waiver. Now, before all this even comes on board, for you to be a member of APC, you must go and register at your ward, your local government, your ward. So for if APC, if the All Progressive Congress says uh, Obong Akadimo Udofia is a member of APC and he contested the primaries and his name has been sent to Ireland, that he won the primaries. I am not sure where a judge will be able to come to say that Akanumo Udofia is not a member of APC. I mean, it's just bizarre to me. Is, uh, 
of, of Mr. Uh, Ajibulu uh, in that same yes. judgment. So far, is that according to the judgment, I mean, the waiver you just talked about, for instance, um, what, the, what is being reported is that the judge said that the waiver given from the APC was not signed by, quote, any known persons. Could you tell us about that? Because one of the, the bases uh, for which the, the, uh, the judgment went was, look, this person, as you said, uh, wasn't a member of the party. You said that he's a member of the party and consequently got some waivers. But the basis of even going to court in the first place by the people who took the, the plaintiffs, I guess, was he wasn't a member of the party having just perhaps recently come into the party and gotten these waivers that you talked about. So tell us about the process, because he joined Chamberlain. not shortly, Chamberlain. not too, I, not, not too long after, and then the primaries were conducted. Okay. okay, can I ask you a question? How did he, how did he contest the primaries? He just dropped from the sky. He just dropped from the sky, and then he's contesting APC gubernatorial primaries. He just dropped from the sky. He was screamed. He was cleared to contest. I wasn't a part of the process. My job as chairman of the uh, gubernatorial primaries was I have a list of aspirants, conduct an election, and announce the winner. So, how even the senator, how Senator Ita Enang, how he became, how he, how he cleared his, um, how he was cleared, I don't know. How the other man, um, Odon Dege, I keep wondering his name. I don't know how he was cleared, you know. I was given a list of cleared primaries from the party headquarters, and I worked with um, that list. So it's not in my place to say what the process is, what the process is not. I was given a list of cleared and credible. Now, do not forget, in this same process, some people are screened out. They don't make the court. Uh, do you understand that? In, the, that, in, in, that, in that same process. Yeah, you, you mentioned the other time that the resident electoral commissioner, you know, was trying to make a claim about the venue of the oh. of the primary. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I will, I will unequivocally state it. He called me and he was trying to convince me. Okay, to but come one of the what Arena. he had said. Yes. Just a second. What he yeah. had said yeah. was, and I think this was reported on May twenty seven or thereabout. What he said mm. was, look, the the venue was perhaps the one that INEC was in, informed that that is that the event will hold at, that the primary will hold at, and that the state party executives were there and some other officials were there. The DSS person that you said was also there with him. So INEC was there. So many other people were there at that venue that I believe, I do not think that INEC would just wake up and say, this is the venue we're going to go and everyone else must go there. So how come there was a mix-up where the state exco of uh, Aquaibum was there uh, at that venue that the INEC official was, and then uh, you said that the event was holding somewhere else? Was there a venue change? Okay, so, oh, okay, so now you're taking me, you're going to take me back in uh, history. I mean, you're going to take me back to something I mean, I, I've tried to block, something I've tried to forget. So the truth of the matter is when we, when I and my committee, when we go to Aquaibum, we were held to ransom, for over for close to five hours, um, the bus we were in was almost burnt. It took the intervention of the DSS to rescue us after over five hours, surrounded by hundreds. And some by whom? Trying to, trying to, trying to force us to go to a, a place called Shiagris Arena, okay. which was the alternate venue. We were surrounded. It was a very traumatizing experience for me. Because as the chairman of the committee, the lives of the other committee members, I mean, was also, you know, was on my shoulders. You know, it took the intervention. Even, even the, even, I mean, like, different people, I mean, my phone was, you know, I mean, when I became chairman of the committee, my number was, so my number was on the internet. So almost every player, Every player in Aquaibum politics was calling my phone. Every major player was calling my phone. And I stood on one thing. I am going to conduct 
primaries in the recognized venue where the party said I was going to conduct, I should conduct the primaries, which was the APC secretariat, state secretariat okay. in, Uyo, in Uyo. Then we were held to ransom for over four and a half hours, five hours, by thugs blocking us from going to the APC national secretariat to conduct these primaries and trying to force us to come to the Shia Grace Arena. I have never heard of the Shia Grace Arena before in my life, you know? But I insisted I stood my ground. And with the intervention of the DSS, they rescued us and they moved us to the DSS um, headquarters for safety. I'm talking at this time, maybe, 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 maybe 9.30 at night. Um, you understand? And it was while I was in the DSS office, different calls started coming through. Uh, do you understand? Um, Senator Odo and there was one of the people that called me. In fact, Senator Itaina called me and even came to meet me in the DSS director's office. Um, um, the INEC correct called the DSS director, you know, and, the DSS, and I spoke to him on the DSS director's phone. So that conversation must be recorded somewhere. And I state categorically, he tried to convince me to come to the Shia Grace Arena to conduct the elections. And he said to me as well, All that right. he will not recognize the election in the party, in the party secretariat. And I said to him, I'm not sure. I said, look, I'm traumatized. I've been through a lot. Left to me, I'm ready to go back to Abuja. But however, I have a mandate to conduct primaries from the APC. All right, Mr. Ajibolu, we, we, we do have uh, Senator Itain and here with us, who you also have mentioned. Yeah, please. He is the APC yeah, governorship yes, yes, candidate, yes. as well as the former special advisor to the president on National Assembly and Niger Delta Affairs. He joins us here in the studio to respond to some of what you said. Good morning, Senator. Thank, Thank you, for you very much. Today. Well, you, you heard uh, a lot of what he said uh, about the process, which the court did agree with you yeah. that uh, Akanadofia was not a member of the yeah. party, and so notified the election, yeah. asking that a fresh primary be conducted. Yeah. How do you respond to what he said first, perhaps? Let me thank him for at least the courage to appear to speak here, because I thought that he will not have the courage to speak after what he did in Akwaibom. But I, I respect him. I, I am the plaintiff in the case, where, and my claim before the court was that there was no governorship primaries in Akwaibom state. First, because INEC did not monitor that primaries. And I stated this position immediately after the, the primaries was on 26th, on 26th. On 27th, I called a press conference myself and us to that, look, it doesn't matter who will win in this case, but that this process we've done has not been monitored by INEC. So we sh the party should recall the, the, the panel headed by Mr. Jibulu back to Abuja so that, and then call or, or, or call everybody, let us agree, first, on the delegate list to be used, and second, on the venue to be, for the election to be conducted, third, for INEC to monitor the election. First, INEC said, and they were right, that this, the delegate list you have, the delegate list they have, is the one that emanated from the congresses that were conducted by the Austin-led executive. And that is the certified one. And that is the one that was to be used at the Eagle Square. That is why in the presidential primaries, Akwaibom State did not vote because of this dispute. Now, going back to the, um, going back to the uh, membership, the elections, screening was done. We bought form. And my brother and friend, Mr. Uh, Akanodofia, who is not a member of the APC, he bought the nomination form of the PDP, stood, nom stood screening in the PDP, was screened and cleared in the PDP. He was issued clearance certificate by the PDP to contest the pre presidential, the gubernatorial primaries of the PDP on the 25th. Now, on the, 20, on the 1st of May, while his clearance was still pending, and he was to con 1st of May, and he was to contest the election on the 25th of May, which he actually contested, he wrote a letter purporting to resign from 
APC on the 1st of May. On the 5th of May... Are you going to resign from APC or PDP? I'm going to resign from PDP mm -hmm. to join APC. On the 5th of May, he manufactured a, a concept that he has a, he's a member of APC. Now, he came on the 13th or about the 7th or 8th of May to buy the gubernatorial form. On the uh, 13th of May, he came for screening. And particularly on the 14th of May, he said he obtained a waiver, a waiver of the party to contest the election. Okay. Now, this is what we contended in court, that look, under the law, the act, mm -hmm. that you can only contest primaries of the party while the register, if you are a member of the party, mm -hmm. while the register of the members is still, register of membership is still open. And the Electoral Act provides that the register of members must be submitted to INEC 30 days to the primaries. So the court held that there, you, there, there was no, he's not a member of the party. Okay. Because on the 25th of May, preceding 26th, he had contested and lost the, pre, the gubernatorial primaries of PDP. 25th, then the 25th, 25th of May, that is a day to the 26th of May, which we held our own primaries. So he contested on 25th in PDP, had votes, and he contested, he came over okay. in, P, in APC so, the following day and contested. And so quite a board. number of things you raised, but first yes. of all, was there a change of venue eventually? Yes, no, no. Yes, the, there is a question of contest, I mean, um, contestation as to venue. There were two blocks in in, in Akwaibon State. And of these two blocks, one of them belonged to the, was, that was led by the former national secretary of the party, my brother, J.J. Akwano Doidega. And um, the chairman is uh, Austin Ekanu. There's the other one that is led by, um, I mean, that is chaired by Ntuekbo, you know, which uh, uh, there was a court judgment pronouncing that there is, um, that Ntuekbo is the state chairman. Now, the INEC said that, and they were right, that the, I, the delegate list that we have, which is the one that we monitored the local government congresses that produced the delegate, that voted the delegate to the uh, uh, state congresses, which we used in electing the state officers, you know, is the one they have that this other one that you have, you know, and you want to do that, is not recognized. Now, that, yes, there was a court judgment saying that the, they have recognized um, Ntugwekbo as the new chairman of the party. But there is an order of the Court of Appeal. There is an order of the Court of Appeal, which I also exhibited, that there was, that there was order of... Um, uh, um, status quo antebellum, that is, who let the status quo remain, an order of the Court of Appeal. Okay. Now, on the basis of that, this is, and the order of the court, high, federal high court, neither the order of the federal high court, nor the order of the Court of Appeal, annulled or had anything to do with the delegate list. And in fact, this thing played out exactly again in the Eagle Square at the presidential convention. And I said, okay. that is why we did not vote. And even in the primary that we're going out for God willing, they're going back for God willing, we must first agree that this is the appropriate delegate okay. list to be used. But part of what Mr. Ajibu said is yes. that the party granted him waiver. Okay. And according to the laws, mm -hmm. both the Electoral Act and the Constitution, yeah. it is the party that submits the list of a candidate. Yeah. So they then question, how come the court is trying to dissent and determine who has the right to determine who is a member of the party? I agree with you to the extent that that was the law. I speak and I go to court as a lawyer, not just as a lawyer advocating, but also as, um, as a, a lawmaker. I was a principal party to the making of the Electoral Act 2003. I was chairman of Rules and Business Committee of the, of the House of Representatives. I was the, the principal party to the making of the Electoral Act 2010, which was repealed in 2022. I was advisor to the president on National Assembly Senate 
which I, 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 I was a principal party to the issue that led to the, uh, all the issues that related to the Electoral Act, which has finally been assented to. The issue in then was that, is it, it, is, it is the right of the party to file candidates? Yes. And that was when it was said to be internal affairs of the party. But when we saw in the legislature and the decisions of the court that the, the parties were almost descending because of the brigandage by the leadership of the different parties as at that time, we now said, look, in the legislature, the legislature now said, let there be a level of decorum. And a few of the things that were in the, in the uh, regulations and rules of the party were elevated into the Electoral Act. Now, the question of the Electoral Act says in Section 84.1 that every party, any, that, the party the, that the candidate must emanate from the convention of the, from the convention or Congress of the party, which must be monitored by INEC. So it is not a question of internal affairs of the party any longer. But it's still the party that will present the candidate. Yeah, no, no, no. If you can only pre yes, it is the party that will present the candidate. Mm -hmm. But in section 8413, 8413, the law says that where the uh, candidate does not emanate from a validly conducted primary, that INEC shall not accept the, the, uh, the nomination. The candidate has of the, the party. To, INEC has the power to reject Yes, the has the candidate. power to reject the candidate. So, but really? the, the thing is this, yes. you, you allege, you also make an allegation that, um, you know, you're surprised that Mr. Jibulu is here yeah. um, as chairman of that, of that particular primary. Yes. Um, why do you say so? Because according to him, he was only working with what the party gave him to work with. I agree, agree with him, but I agree with you. But I was a great party to the rescue of the team. But I, can I say, look, Akwaibom is not known for this level of violence. Because when they came, they were blocked on the way. Mm -hmm. By and who? By a, a, um, a, a group of uh, persons who were dissatisfied one way or the other. And in fact, as I was briefed, I had to leave everything I did to intervene in an odd manner with the SSS and the police. I must, com com I must compliment the SSS and the police and the leadership of the state party because everybody sank their differences. When the uh, gentlemen who attacked and blocked them opened the tank of the bus and wanted to use lighter to set fire on it. So we, everybody had to release every help they could so that the SSS came by every means to set fire on the bus with them inside, with the uh, Ajubulu and the, president and the team inside. Because we were scared. These are fathers and parents and children of people, you know. So what we did was, look, let's rescue them to the SSS. SSS and the police rescued them, took them to the SSS headquarters. At 11 o'clock, 11.15, I went to meet him, at least to, uh, at least to empathize with them, make sure they are safe, make sure they were catered for. Not, not to influence the process? No, no, no. No, 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 I, I didn't have any, any, any capacity to influence any process. They were in the office of the state director of, uh, director of state services, you know. Mm -hmm. So I went to him. Other people also went. Others put a call. Now, I now asked him, Mr. Jubulu. Now, as it is, when are, we, are you likely to conduct the uh, primaries? He told me that he is too traumatized to think of conducting the primaries because they are still recovering from the trauma of escaping of, of, of life. Now, in the, in the course of it, in the presence of the state director of SSS, he said, but the, um, but the law says that if you don't conduct it today, it will last. I said, no, that the law is only interested in your filing candidate before the 4th of June. As at that time, I never said the 4th of June, you know, that this is the situation. And... I, we discussed and left. I left with the understanding that, and I told him, look, let the, before you conduct these primaries, the primaries you're talking about, let the leaders meet, resolve some of the contentious issues, including the venue, including everything, including the delegate list. He seemed to have agreed with me. I left him at the SSS quarters and went back to my house. Precisely 17 minutes after I left Ajibulu at the state uh, at the DSS headquarters in Uyo, I was informed that he has 
he and his team have left to the uh, uh, venue to conduct election. In fact, I was standing uh, downstairs and attending and uh, meeting the, uh, one of the uh, panel members, a colleague, a, a, a colleague in the Senate who came for the um, uh, House of Reps primaries, you know, which was also, all of them came in the same plane. And I saw him go out. So I was thinking that he was going out to meet the, to the police because he was with the SSS now to consult about uh, the, when he's going to hold the primaries. And I left after that, only to be told 17 minutes, and I, I keep repeating 17 minutes after I left, I got home. I was told he is at the venue, starting the process of the primary. So what did he do wrong? So, yeah. So I now said, oh, no, it can't be there. That he, I left him, he said he was going to the police, only to find out. I went there. I found him distributing ballot papers to uh, people, unidentified people to vote. This was about 12 past 12, 1 a.m. in the night. I now asked him, Mr. Jibo, chairman, where is the delegate list? He said he did not come with the delegate list. Okay, I asked him again, where is INEC here? He looked around, he said, INEC, he said, it's not my business, I came to conduct primaries. So I sat for about 15, 10 to 12 minutes, discussed with the state chairman, um, Mr. Ntugwekbo, and I, I stood up and said, look, the kind of this process, the entirety of it is a nullity. And I walked away, and I walked away. Other, other. Where was this? Was this, not, was this at the secretariat of your party? At the state secretariat of the, the party. Okay. You know, according to the judgment of the High Court, which recognized Ntugwekbo. But the primaries and the delegate list, because why I asked him of the delegate list was to find out. Where, where, which of the list are you using? Is it the list that was produced by the um, uh, INEC monitored uh, uh, primaries? I mean, uh, yes, of the congresses. INEC monitored congresses of the local governments of the uh, local government of the state of the world and at the state. He said okay. he didn't come with it, All and right. he was just tearing papers to people anyhow. All right, let, let's uh, have him, Mr. Jibulu. So, could you tell us then? Is this how things play down? Well, um, Senator Italian has um, um, spoken, mm -hmm. and then uh, some of what he has said, well, I have to concur with. But then I must say that uh, maybe, um, you know, maybe his memory has failed him a bit, um, that he does not recollect in entirety um, what actually happened. So first things first, um, point of correction for Mr. Enang. I left him in the DSS director's office. I went to conduct primaries. I left him there. He was still with the DSS director when I left. Um, you know, uh, that's one. And then before even all that, I mean, he's a lawyer. So he puts me at a disadvantage. He can quote this, quote that, quote this, quote that. I'm a tax consultant and I, I'm in politics. I stand on certain things that I know. I don't understand gray areas. Is one, pl one plus one cannot be three. A waiver normally, it's total in whatever circumstances. That is what the word means, waiver, waiver. It means certain things have been waived aside, uh, you know. And INEC recognized only one ex school. Do you understand? And that, that gave me the, uh, and INEC recognized the party. And the party, I'm, I'm happy he accepted that. And the party gave me a mandate to come and uh, conduct primaries. Now, he stayed at the primaries. He said he stayed for 10 or 15 minutes. I beg to differ. Um, he's a gentleman. I beg to differ. He said he was, at the he was at the venue of the primaries for over one hour. And he came. He was shown the delegate list. And he sat down. He said, I was distributing. I had committee members. You know, I was the chairman. I had committee members. He came. He shook my hand. He sat down. He was there for at least an hour. At least one hour. I repeat, and you know, he keeps saying he's saying 17 minutes. I'm saying one hour minimum. It was at the primary, it was the venue, of, and then there are videos to corroborate this. There are videos, there are pictures of him being shown the delegate list. You know, I know nothing about Akwaibon politics. I came from national. So he can't involve me in your village squabbles. You know, I work with what the party gives to me. And I will put the party above 
and beyond any individual, um, you know. So he sat down. He was there for over an hour. And he stood up. He took the microphone. And he said um, he, he, had a, um, he had a complaint. And he spoke. All this is documented. It is recorded. It, is, it was on TV, you know. And he, and he, and he made his, um, you know, whatever. He, he said he was not satisfied with the process, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I said, noted. He went, sat down for another five minutes and stood up and he left the venue. So he came coming to say he came to the pro, he, he came there, he stayed for uh, five minutes, uh, he complained about um, anomalies and he left. I, I beg to differ with that. I put it and I categorically state Senator Ita Enang was at the venue of the primaries for minimum of an hour. After which, and when he came, he asked for the delegate list. They showed him. He discussed some things with the party chairman. I don't know whatever was discussed. And, but the um, committee proceeded in sharing ballot papers. And he sat down. So uh, for me, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't razzle dazzle you. But then um, if you come, if you ask for, if you ask for delegate list, they, they show you the delegate list, and you go back and sit down. To me, it's a tacit approval. It's a tacit, you're satisfied. And he was there. After about an hour, he stood up, asked for the microphone, and he said there are a lot of irregularities happening here, and he's uh, protesting. And when he finished, I said, noted. He sat down again for another, and him and a couple of other aspirants, they left. And we, and, we, and we conducted primaries. And another point, you see, in the heat of the moment, we miss, we miss out on a lot of things. The timing was way before 12 midnight. He has to, uh, he has to, he didn't come at 1 a.m. Way before midnight. The process started way before midnight. You know? So, uh, that's all I have to say for now until I hear whatever. Um, all right, Senate, Senator, Senator has to say, and I have to rebuke. So, Senator Enang. Senator Inanga, I imagine you would want to respond to, you know, all of the, these things that uh, Mr. Ajibolo has just said, particularly about him having the delegates list and you were shown. Uh, as you respond to that, I'd also like you to clarify uh, the phone call he also referred to that he had with the resident electoral commissioner who was prevailing on him to... Um, you know, come to the Sheer Grace Arena for the primary that will be conducted there rather than that of the, uh, that conducted at the uh, headquarters of the party in Akwaibom State. Uh, is that quite um, acceptable within the confines of what the role of the uh, commission should be in terms of, you know, neutrality and uh, uh, attending or monitoring primaries acceptable uh, uh, to INEC upon invitation by the political party. Thank you very much. But please, come, before coming to that, let me talk about um, the question of waiver that he has raised. Why I, I, I said at the beginning that I was a party to the making of all the Electoral Act, 2003, 2011, and um, 2000, and, um, and the uh, one that culminated in the 2022. And it was when we saw that there the, were a lot of irregularities in party activities that is why the question of practice of the electoral parties, of the parties, was elevated into the Electoral Act. And the Electoral Act provided what you have to do. So if the process is internal to the party, you can waive it, if it is exclusively internal to the party. But the law is that if it is the provisions of the statute, the party of the law, the party cannot waive it. The party cannot waive it. So there can be no waiver. So if the party says you must be a member of the party so before you become, uh, uh, before you are qualified to vie, then you have to, and that cannot be waived by the party. And of course, what the, the, um, the purported waiver he produced, which the court examined, it was not signed by anybody, was not, uh, was not signed by anybody, did not bear anybody's name, and was not in any manner uh, known as to who originated it. So a lot of things were all fake, and we exhibited all this. Now, on the question of who, whether INEC is, should determine the venue of the, INEC cannot determine, and INEC in this case did not determine. Now, INEC said, the delegate list we have is here. One. Two, 
I have received the notification as to the venue. You know, these were the correspondences. All other issues which are INEX specific, I am not privy to it. I, have, I did not know what they discussed there. All I know was that that evening, that evening, a video was circulating where the, chair, the um, commissioner of police in the company of the uh, independent of, of the uh, INEC commissioner, Mr. Mike Egini, addressed the delegates who were in the list that they had at the venue called Share Grace, which was more, um, led by Mr. Austin Utuk. He addressed them at that venue. And in that video, he said that the, the uh, panel members are held up at the, uh, at the SSS, that they were rescued after the trauma. That was about 10, 30, 11. That was when, and then he now, um, he now, the INEC and the Commissioner of Police now declared at that venue that this um, uh, Congress is postponed and they will be informed and the party will inform them as to when it will be conducted. And that is what INEC wrote in their report, that the Congress did not hold and that the chairman of the panel, Mr. Ajibulu, informed him that they are too traumatized and will inform him when they, were, when they will conduct the primaries again. That is the video that's showing what INEC commissioner, with the commissioner of police, addressed the uh, delegate and said. And so the people went back home believing that the Congress had been postponed. And that was why the following day, and in their report, they said that INEC said that they will be informed, when they are informed of the next date for the holding of the Congress, they will be there. I mean, oh yeah, of the, of the primaries, they will be there. And the people dispersed. That video came out at about 11 o'clock. That was even before I went to the uh, this DSS headquarters. Yes, my friend had said that he left me at the DSS headquarters. The DSS office in which I was with him was in the, in the office of the state director upstairs. I finished with the, the state director and himself. I came downstairs, was still chatting with the distinguished colleague of mine. And while he, when, he came out with a, when he came out and entered a car of one of the aspirants, I mean, of one of the persons, I, I apologize for this, of, entered a car, and I thought they were going to the commissioner of police, who was not here, being a security, that he has briefed the, the, the SSS, the DSS here, he may be going to brief the commissioner of police, because he told me he was too traumatized to hold the, conven the uh, Congress. I'm just... And of course, please let me add this too, mm -hmm. that let my brother confirm, and um, I, the, 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 uh, your other colleague and the anchoring on the other side, she asked that if it is the duty of SSS to determine the venue or something. I said, no, it is the party. But the party will have to, to, to um, inform INEC. Like what we did at the, at the Eagle Square, the, the, um, the um, confirmation of the delegate was done at the International Conference Center. When you go for the, for, uh, to show you that you are a delegate, INEC will be there to show that you are a delegate in the list that the, from the co uh, Congress they monitored from the states. And so INEC was there throughout the process after of the uh, accreditation at the International Conference Center. And after that, INEC was also there at the, uh, INEC was also there at the Eagle Square. And the names of the INEC officers were announced representing the chairman of INEC at the, at the, at the, at the, at the Eagle Square, where we did the uh, presidential primaries. So this is a standard practice known to law and in compliance with the law as it were. I just want to okay. confirm, I don't know if Bookie still has any more questions, but I want to confirm from you where you think this now leaves your party. Oh. Uh, and a fresh primary has been ordered in 14 yeah. days, but yeah. looking at what is currently happening, there's certainly rancor. Uh, so one, one, one will wonder if INEC will still be able to take the names from the primaries conducted by your party in 14 days, 
uh, since names have already been shown, INEC is in, a, is in a whole different process right now. So whether INEC will still be able to accept the names, one, and then two, whether your party will still be able to pull together, uh, because this certainly has implications for the unity within the APC in Akwaibo. Incidentally, the APC is one family in Akwaibo. It's one, but one is, APC is closely knitted, but it's only a question of this different interest. That's number one. Number two, as of today, because INEC did not monitor this problem, because a lot of irregularities, and because of Section uh, 84.1 and 84.13, mm -hmm. the INEC, I mean, APC, Akwaibo, is the only party in the entire country, the only state that APC has no candidate. So it's not a question that somebody is a candidate and is removed. No. Mm. APC, there is, when you look at the, uh, the, the box of APC in the uh, INEC, just Google it now, you will see that it is blank. The governorship, deputy, it is blank. So we don't have a candidate. So it is this suit of, of mine, it is this action of mine, which has given the party a window mm. to uh, now conduct primaries yeah. and uh, But Senator, there are questions as to yes. questions as to this window. Because I mean, yes, we see the conditions upon which um, a candidate or a political party may present a new list, conduct fresh primaries, giving 14 days notice and the likes. But there are those who question the legality of giving the party, the APC in Aquabum State, a second bite at the cherry because they thought if you missed out, if you did not meet the required process, you lost it. So now they wonder upon what proceedings or law, either from the electorate or otherwise, did the judge rely on to grant the party 14 days or a fresh the, primary? The, 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 the law, I think it's section 8414, says that if you are dissatisfied with any of these processes, you can approach the court of law. And when you approach the court of law, the court of law is, makes an order. Then you are, you, it is now said court ordered. So the court has inherent jurisdiction and in a jurisdiction under the act. Since it says that a party dissatisfied can approach the court. When you approach the court, you are entitled to a relief. And that relief can then give you an opportunity to present a candidate and be on the ballot. So, as of today, APC is not on the gubernatorial ballot in Akwaibom State. So nobody's name is there. Yet the party, believing that it had a right, and uh, somehow it can um, send name, emanating from its process, sent a name. But the INEC, in accordance with the law, it, it has, has said this process is not known to law, and under Section 84.1, 39, and of course 29, and other sections, you don't have a candidate. And more so, INEC had said in their written report, which was submitted on the 30th, that we are still waiting for APC to give a date for another, uh, for Congress. And on the 28th of this, on the 27th, I called a press conference myself and Austin, stating the position that as it is now, we are not likely to have a candidate. That is 28th of May. On 20, that is 27th of May. On 29th and 28th of May, I wrote a letter to the party, the party executive, that please, let us call back the panel. Let us call the parties and agree on a process, agree on the list, so that we can have a Congress, a, um, um, Congress that we can have a candidate that can stand for us. And on the 20th, 30th, I wrote another letter. I did, was not even see, I did not even see the report of INEC, and I stated the position of the law known to me. On the 9th of May, you know, I mean, on the about 5th of June, I wrote another letter, still stating the position of the law to the party, you know? In fact, there is a name, the party, the party headquarters, you know, sees me and has all my correspondences. And when I come, they sympathize with the situation. But they know that they were, that they were in a loop. But you know, it's a party, I'm loyal to it, and I'm bound by it, and I've shown respect right. to the party in all this thing, and in all particulars, and I did not attack the party, because I know the party is a party, we put it together, and I'm a member, and we're bound by the party. But I know that the law allows them, the party, 
to uh, conduct primaries now, and I believe that uh, I'm conscious, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that primaries will be conducted in 14 days. All right, we'll and just I will win and become the candidate of the party. We'll just go on a quick break, and we'll come back and get the closing thoughts of both gentlemen. Please join us again. Welcome back. Well, it's our concluding moments now, and we'll do that as soon as we can. So, Mr. Ajibu will tell us as we wind down on this one. Now that this order is here, we have to, it has to be obeyed. So, how are you, or the party, planning to approach this? Would you be willing to go back and conduct well, another one? Of course. So, I'm not here to defend anybody or, you know, or project anybody. My issue was I conducted primaries, and I conducted legit primaries for the APC. Again, I stand. When we talk, we should be, you know, we should be very objective. Only a madman will go to court, you know, with a waiver that is not signed by anybody. It must have been signed by somebody, uh, you know. And then Senator Enang, I'm happy he didn't dispute most of the things I said. Again, he has to understand, he's saying, there's a window. Who is he to give our party a window? He knows better than he knows better than the party. For me, the party is supreme. How can the party be happy with him? No, I, I, I think he meant that say, the court has provided the opportunity, the window for the party. To no, have he said. He, no, he or said. We'll, we'll eventually he said. Go ahead no, 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 no. He said he was responsible for it. He said he was responsible. The process he initiated has resulted in this. You know, and then he was saying some other things um, earlier on. I'm sorry, I went off for a while, so I couldn't um, respond. I, I, I reconnected. He said something about them when we were um, when we were blocked and surrounded by hundreds of thugs. How come we are held for over four or five hours, surrounded by hundreds of thugs, and the police commissioner and the INEC rec are in a venue and they are comfortable being there? That's a poser for all to mm. think about. Okay. Well, at the end of... All right. I'm um, just... Um, to, to just yeah, pardon me. Up, we, well, we, yeah. Go ahead and wrap yeah, up, please. Sorry, to just... Uh, yeah, to just round up, um, I wish um, Senator Ita Enanguel, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I would like to see where this uh, path would, um, would, would take him. Going against the party, you cannot go against the party, and um, get something. I, I wish him right. all the best. Thank you. Okay. Well, Senator, just before you proceed, I'm, I'm trying to look for what parts of the law, the electoral act, did you, yeah, you refer to when you said that uh, uh, the, the court, if anybody felt aggrieved, they can approach the court, and then the courts can rely on that to order this second bite to the chair in the manner of speaking. I think, I think Section 8414, or, or, or so, but there is, is, is there in the law, is there in the electoral act that you have to approach the court? It is it is on the basis of that that people have gone to court, you know, that if you are satisfied with the process. And of course, it is under the, it is constitutional. It is inconstitutional, you know, you can. But, and, but it only, the only thing is that it limits you to the federal high court, you know, but that is, that, that, that is it. On the, in responding to my friend and brother, Mr. Mm. Ajibulu, he is um, a member of our party, and there is an extent to which I can't um, uh, go with him. And uh, because finally we are all still going to stand on the same podium to market our presidential candidate, gubernatorial candidate, and he will market me as the candidate of the party, God willing, and the and uh, by the grace of the party. So I will not respond to him in the same low language that he has addressed some of the issues. But I thank him, and I I, I thank him, and I really thank God that that we 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 came out of the issues. Uh, uh, everybody alive. And I won't respond to all other issues because they may not be relevant to today. And it's not possible to respond to all the issues within the short time here. Yeah. And all of right. course, if I need to respond to some of the issues, I may go low. But I don't, I, I must maintain 
my standing. Also, Nitoy Taina is the APC governorship aspirant for Akwai State and former special advisor to the president on National Assembly and Niger Delta Affairs. We have also had Mr. Tunde Ajibulu, who was the chairman of that APC governorship primaries conducted in Akwai State. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Anytime. Thank you. Right. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.